And this guy, he killed another guy, his name, Omar Gonzalez, 12 days before. I want justice for all. I'm gonna read your statement now, y'all. I'm the father of Jesse Romero. My son was only 14 years old when killer LAPD cop Eden Medina shot and killed him in broad daylight. This happened on August 9th, 2016 during rush hour in Boyle Heights. My son was visiting friends when Medina and his partner, Alex Higareda, snuck up on him and his friends and chased my son into the intersection of Breed and Chavez. During the lawsuit trial against LAPD, a witness who saw the entire shooting spoke about how my son had his hands in the air and was starting to kneel when killer cop Medina shot him. He was surrendering and his killer did not care. It is important for me to also let you know that his killer, Eden Medina, did not just kill my son. 12 days before he killed Jesse, Killer cop Medina had killed another person named Omar Gonzalez. Medina continues working for LAPD. No one ever took his gun away, nor his badge, and much less put him in jail. Since 2016, we have learned a lot about killer cops in this country. I stand with you today because I will never stop fighting for justice for my own son, Jesse Romero. But I also know that we have a common fight against racism. George Floyd and Jesse are only two of thousands of victims. We must continue to fight for justice. We must continue to, to unite. Black Lives Matter and justice for my son. Say his name. Jesse Romero. Say his name. Jesse Romero. Say his name. Jesse Romero. I say. So I just want to name y'all, we've been, well, y'all know we've been here for almost three years now. Hey, y'all can clap for that. Y'all can clap for that. We've been here for almost three years and many of y'all have been with us for these past four, five, six weeks and it's been beautiful, right? And I just want to name that clearly we're having an impact, right? Doc mentioned earlier the wins that we've gotten just in the last few weeks, and I'll let other folks talk about that. But I just wanna name that, if it didn't matter y'all being here, do y'all think they would try so goddamn hard to stop you? Right? There's a reason. There's a reason they block us off for blocks and blocks and blocks and block off every entrance coming off the freeways. They don't want us here, right? And that tells us they feel, that tells me they feel our fucking presence, right? That our presence in these streets is having an impact. We are pushing these folks. Jackie Lacey and the folks inside this building, they're afraid of y'all. So that tells me these wins that we've been getting aren't the fucking end, right? If they weren't afraid of being defunded, why would they try to stop y'all from coming here, right? Yeah. Right? Why would they try to make it look like the protests are smaller that people are, are stopping, right? Nah. So that's why, right, in addition to the families that we must center and uplift, that's why we gotta keep coming back, y'all. Because this shit is making an impact. This shit is absolutely making an impact, right? And they feel it every single fucking day and every single time we're out here on Wednesday. So I want to give y'all some love 
for continuing to do that. And one more time, remind these folks while we out here. Jackie Lacey must go! Jackie Lacey will go! Jackie Lacey must go! Jackie Lacey will go! Killer Cops ain't funny! New DA for 2020! Killer Cops ain't funny! Bye Jackie 2020! Jackie Lacey must go! Jackie Lacey will go! Jackie Lacey must go! Jackie Lacey will go! So, as we've said before, state sanctioned violence isn't limited to the police. And another reason that Jackie Lacey must go is because of the, the murder of this brother. Let's give it up for the brother of Jamil Moore, David. <laughs> Say his name. Jamil Moore. 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 Timothy Dean now. Say his name. Say his name. Say his name. Jackie Lacey received money from this serial predator and rapist Ed Buck um, for her campaign. She refused to prosecute Ed Buck for raping injecting crystal methamphetamine into many young and old and you know seasoned black gay men um, she refused to prosecute this man for the crimes that he committed against our community and so today I stand here again and I yell fuck Jackie Lacey Fuck Jackie Lacey. Fuck Jackie Lacey. Fuck Jackie Lacey. And fuck the sheriffs. Fuck the sheriffs. Say his name. 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 So we know that, that this has continued to happen and it's happened to so many folks ooh, in, our, in our communities and in our city and in our county. So we wanted to ask if there are any other families here today, families of folks who have been murdered by police violence that we haven't seen yet, that we've missed. If there are any other families with us today, please come through. We want to make this space for you. All right, y'all, the, the family does not want to speak, but we're going to say the name Juan Correa. All right? Yeah. Say his name! Juan Correa! Say his name! We love you and we're with you. Any other families, please, please come up to the front. Let us know that you're here. We want to make space for you. We want to... Y'all here? Is, the, is this fam here? Word. Word. We absolutely love and uplift the family and friends of Andres Guardado. We want to say his name as well. Andres Guardado, say his name. Andres 
Say his name. Say his name. I say. Justicia. Hey, justicia, baby. You have heard about what has been happening. You've heard about what the students deserve and BLM accomplished at LAUSD. Haven't you heard about that? All right. You've heard about the fact that they cut $150 million from the LAPD. Have you heard about that? Yesterday, at the Board of Supervisors, they voted unanimously to start shutting down Men's Central Jail. <laughs> and to find alter real alternatives. And so your presence here has meant those changes that happened. They are great starts. That's a good beginning, but that's not victory. We gotta celebrate and remember our successes. We have to celebrate and remember what we did to make this happen. But we cannot stop. We cannot let up. We cannot say, let's go home. Because if you do, they will assume that we have given up and moved on. Or not given up, but taken this and moved on. And so we don't intend to do that. Do you? So, I really wanted an opportunity. And I was reminded that in Measure R, when it won, we stopped them from building two more jails. Shout out to Justice LA. We got subpoena power for the Sheriff's Commission. So we are winning because we know when we fight, when we fight, when we fight, we are winning. But we are not, we have not completely won. One of the things I simply wanted to share with you all is the presence of these police. This is a show of force. They don't need that. They don't need that. They don't need that. And they know it. But they think that their presence here will stop us. They think that somehow or another they can do this, this show of force, that that will intimidate us or frighten us. No. It only makes us stronger. It only proves that we got to do more. It only reminds us that they are not here for us. Who are they protecting? Who are they protecting? These are our streets. So as you feel good about this minute, remember the names that we have called out. Some of you have called out George Floyd, but we got George Floyd's right here in LA. Some of you have called out Sandra Bland, but we got Sandra Bland right here in L.A. Right, right. Yeah. Some of you have called out Aubrey, right, Aud Aud who was killed in Brunswick, Georgia. We have our own Ahmed Aud Aubrey right here in L.A. We must connect with, support all of those, but we must remember and fight for the justice for families right here in L.A. Right now, 
right now. Too often we look across the water to see what's going over over there. And in looking over there, we sometimes miss the pond right in front of us. So remember these names. I'm hoping next week when we come here, I'll be here. How about y'all? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> but for many weeks, for many years, we have this banner and it has the name of all of the people that we could count on them. We wanna make sure that you see those names also. Because if we forget them, if we think, wow, that was something, and keep moving, then there won't be justice for the families. So demand justice for the families. Demand that we defund the police. And we have got to make sure, Jackie Lacey. Let's go. Jackie Lacey. Let's go. Jackie Lacey. Let's go. Say it, Jackie Lacey. Let's go. So that she at home, because you know she ain't inside. <laughs> because when she, Jackie Lacey has, very quickly, Jackie Lacey has this thing. I would love to meet with them, but they shout at me. They yell at me. Poor thing. She's a public official. Fuck that. She ought to be meeting with every constituent she can get with. So don't let her off the hook. So, Alina. Ah. Uh, we got Sister Jan coming up. Hi everybody. All right, Jan. Yeah. Welcome to our movement. And I just want to share a little bit about some of the work that we did before y'all arrived. So for uh, about two and a half, three years, our, well, let me back up. Our Board of County Supervisors wanted to build two more jails in LA County. We already have the largest jail population in the world right here in LA County. And they wanted to build two more. And they wanted to spend $4 billion to build two more jails. We don't need no more jails. BLM LA said, fuck that. That's right. Fuck that. And we spent about a year gathering signatures to create our own ballot uh, measure, which was called Reform LA Jails. Yeah. So we gathered over 250,000 signatures. We got on the ballot in March. And then we worked to get that ballot measure passed. And so we stopped them from building those two jails. And we said, you're going to give us that $4 million to invest in resources in our community to keep folks um, safe and from going to jail in the first place. So I want to say, not only did we stop them from building two new jails, we also closed in the one that's here. So, and that happened with y'all ushering in and joining us over 17,000 emails were sent to the city council demanding that they kill the innocent for real. That's the power of the fucking people, okay? All power to the people. All power to the people. We want care, not cages. 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 Care not cages. Oh, and, and guess what else we did with Measure R? So we have a civilian oversight commission over the sheriff. That did not have any power. So we also gave the um, civilian oversight body subpoena power so that they can actually do real independent investigations into corruption. So, thank you, that's the power of the people. Oh my God, y'all got to treat 
newcomer, you know what's important is that the youth who is our current and future generation are rising up and fighting for themselves. It's our, it's our youth that have led the work that caused LA School Board to defund the school police by $25 million. And we're calling for them to use that $25 million to invest in black, uh, the, the uh, schools that have the highest black population. So that work was done by phenomenal students like Kalia. So she's going to share some of her work. Hi, I'm Kalila. I'm a rising senior. Um, and I'm here today because um, last week we worked to get the school, bu school board to decide to de defund the police by $25 million and invest in black communities. For years, the school police have said they acknowledge what's going on in schools and they acknowledge everything that we talk about in our school board meetings, but yet they don't face what we're going on, what's going on in their schools every single day. They say that they live in our shoes and they say, like George McKenna said, he's been there before. No, you haven't. You're talking about what you experienced in Louisiana with segregation, but now we're talking about in LA, the segregation in schools. The fight that we fought 40 years ago is still going for equality education. We have whitewashed textbooks teaching us about things in white institutionalized education systems. We want ethnic studies. We don't care about your white institutionalized textbooks. We want investments into so much more, and that's why we come out here and we fight. And students from Students Deserve, an organization I'm a part of, we come out and we fight at the LAUSD headquarters, and we let them know that our voices will continue to be heard every time they want to make a decision that doesn't affect them, it affects us. Right. You're making a decision for students, and you don't care to hear our voices. You cut us off after three minutes, but George McKenna can go on about BS that nobody cares about. So we will continue to fight. And I know the next time that they make a huge decision, we'll be out there. When they make that decision about the LAUSD's task force that they have, about what they're gonna do for schools, we'll be right there outside protesting. We'll be out there letting our voices heard. We'll be there in pro public comment. We'll be there everywhere. You're not gonna make a decision that affects so many students and not have the students be there. Not have a decision that affects black communities and not have the black students be there. You don't care about funding black futures, you just care about you getting money into your system. That's right. Well, what about us? What do we stand for? We stand for so much more that you give us that you give us credit for. You take so much privilege into what you supposedly do, but you don't give the credit to organizations like Black Lives Matter and Students Deserve, Youth Coalition. People that come out there and demand justice every single time you make a decision. You have people out here who are talking about the decisions that they want us to make and they don't even live here. They talk about the decisions that they want us to make and they don't experience what we feel in schools. We did the survey, we did the studies, we experienced the discrimination the racial profiling, getting kicked out of class. We experience it all. So don't tell us about the studies you still need to do. Don't tell us about that task force and whatever they're gonna say, because who knows, you probably paid them off too. So when you make that decision, we'll be there. And we're gonna continue to fight because we want more. 
That 25 million was something, yeah. but we want more. We want more. We want more. And that's what we will continue to fight for because we're going to defund the police and schools and defund the police that continue to show up here every week defunding Jackie Lacey as if she isn't a horrible DA. So as we continue to fight, we will continue to show up. We will continue to get our voices heard and fight for what we believe in. And whether they like it or not, we're still going to come out there and say what we have to say. So we're coming for more than just 25 million. We're coming for more than 35%. And when it happens, don't say that youth couldn't do it because we can do it. Because when we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. Thank you. Give it up for Kalila Williams, yo! Yes, yes. Yeah. The one, the only, Sister Helen Jones! Hey everybody! Thank you for coming out to support us and our families. We appreciate every time y'all come out here because it is necessary. We got to get Jackie Lacey ass out of here, right? We got to get Jackie Lacey out of here in November, right? Are we gonna get her up? Yeah. She got to go. She got to go. Yeah. My son John Horton was beat to death in Mia Central Jail March 30th, 2009. This is my 11 year fighting this department and this damn building sitting here because ain't no justice here. Ain't no justice here. She got the wrong name on this building. This the hall of injustice. The hall of injustice. John was secreted and hid in solitary confinement for the whole 30 days that he was in Mid Central Jail. His first beating, he took on March the 4th. But Mark Romero, which he's a homicide detective today, and he helped kill my son. On March the 30th, they turned around and beat him again and bust his liver, they bust his kidney, they bust the muscle in his back, they broke the cartilage on his nose, they hit him so hard in his forehead with a flashlight that they call flashlight therapy. That's what the sheriff department call it. When they hit you with their flashlight, it's called flashlight therapy. And that, yes, that's what they call it. Huh? Ask them, yes, yeah, they should tell you themselves. You can Google it. They've been doing this for a long time. They've been doing this for a long time. They hit him in his head so hard and left the print of the flashlight on his, the lines of the flashlight on his forehead, a block clock, and a knot. They also hit him twice on the side of his temple. Then he got a large gash on his shoulder. They also messed up part of his pelvis and his pancreas. And after that, they staged a suicide and said he hung himself. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly what they did to my son. And he was 22 years old. And not only did they kill him in solitary confinement, he came in there on February the 24th and he also turned 22 in solitary confinement and died in the same cell that he came in. He turned 20, he spent his last birthday in the cell, turned 22 in there, and then 10 days later, they beat him to death and killed him. So I've been fighting for the last 11 years. And I'm gonna keep standing and fighting for all the mothers and everybody, everybody. That's why this is so important, y'all. We gotta keep coming here every week to show Jackie Lacey, you leave it. Right. You leave it, right? right? 
We don't make her get out of here, right? Yeah. We're going to the polls and get out of here in November, right? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. John Horton, say his name! Say his name! Say his name! John Horton! Say his name! John Horton! Ashe. Michael, where are you at? Come through and give us some black creativity, Michael. Give it up for BLMLA member Michael Williams, y'all! How are y'all doing today? Um, it's a funny story. I don't usually sing in public. Um, I never used to sing in public. There's actually a good story. My, my mom always tells that um, the only time I ever sung was when I was out with my family camping and there was coyotes about. And I used to sing at the fire when there's coyotes. So they would always say, the only time you would ever sing is when your life was threatened. Um, <laughs> but uh, recently, I've been put in that spotlight to be asked to sing. And I don't think I'm the greatest singer in the world. But if that's what folks ask of me in this time and in this movement, then I'm glad to do it. So, um, I just want to sing one song, but because I'm not the greatest singer, um, I would like y'all to help me out a little bit. Go, oh, Michael. So, um, I'm going to start it off. It's an easy so I'm going to first start it out, and if you guys want to join with me, um, join in, and I'll let you know, and then we can harmonize, we can sing together. Sound like a good idea? Cool, great. All right, so a song that goes like this. I can hear my people crying, I can breathe and now i'm in the struggle singing i can't leave we're calling out the races of the violent police and we ain't gonna stop till our people are free okay. we ain't gonna stop till our people are free I can hear my people crying, I can't leave, and now I'm in the struggle singing, I can't leave, we're calling out the violence of these racist police, and we ain't gonna stop till our people are free, we ain't gonna stop Till our people are free. Y'all got that? Yeah. All right, it's your turn, your turn. I'm gonna start it off, and it's all you. I can hear my people crying. I can't breathe. Now I'm in the struggle singing. I can't breathe. We're calling out the violence of these racist police. And we ain't gonna stop people are free. We ain't gonna stop people are free. Okay, one more time, it's all you. Uh, we, let's start that again. Let's start that again. Okay, I'm gonna start you guys in, come on. This is you. I can hear my people crying. I can't breathe. Come on. 
second part. Oh. We ain't done. Second part. Now we go. I'm going to start it off. Same thing. Ain't nobody free till everybody's free. Ain't nobody free till everybody's free. Ain't nobody free so everybody's free. And if you believe that black lives matter, you should sing it with me. Ain't nobody free. So everybody's free. Ain't nobody free. So everybody's free. Ain't nobody free. So everybody's free. And if you believe that black lives matter, you should sing it with me. Okay, we're gonna go from the top. Y'all ready? I'm gonna start it out. I can hear my people crying. I can't breathe. And now I'm in the struggle singing. I can't breathe. We're calling out the violence of these racist police. And we ain't gonna stop the people are free. We ain't gonna till everybody's free. And if you believe that black lives matter, you should sing it with me. Ain't nobody free till everybody's free. Ain't nobody free till everybody's free. Ain't no Everybody's free, so everybody's free. And if you believe that black lives matter, you should sing it with me. Okay, we're gonna go from the top. Y'all ready? I'm gonna start it out. I can hear my people crying. I can't breathe. And now I'm in the struggle singing. I can't breathe. We're calling out the violence of these racist police. And we ain't gonna stop. The people are free. We ain't gonna stop. The people are free. Okay, second part. Ain't nobody free. Everybody's free. Ain't nobody free. Ain't nobody free till everybody's free. If you believe in Black Lives Matter, you can sing it with me. Right back into the top. Here we go. I can't hear my people crying. I can't breathe. Come on, keep going. I can't breathe. <laughs> Everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you, appreciate you. Give it up for Michael Williams! Y'all gonna be singing that on the way home, on the way to church, when you falling asleep at night. On the way to revolution. On the way to revolution. One of our leaders that's leading us on the way to that revolution. Give it up for our very young future!
on in. Signs down. I want to remind you of who you are and what we do here every week. You see, most of you, most of you were told your entire lives that you were not enough. Most of you were told that you were nothing. And some of us got told that so much that we believed it. And it didn't matter what kind of circumstance we were born into, once that gets into your body, and once it gets into your mind. Join us up, the people are free. We ain't gonna stop, the people are free. Okay, second part. Ain't nobody free, everybody's free. Ain't nobody free, everybody's free. Ain't nobody free, so everybody's free. If you believe in Black Lives Matter, you can sing it with me. All right, back into the top. Here we go. I can hear my people crying. I can't breathe. Come on, keep going. All right, everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you, appreciate you. Give it up for Michael Williams! Y'all gonna be singing that on the way home, on the way to church, when you're falling asleep at night. On the way to revolution. On the way to revolution. One of our leaders that's leading us on the way to that revolution. Give it up for our very own Future! If you believe in Black Lives Matter, you can sing it with me. Right back into the top. Here we go. I can hear my people crying. I can't breathe. Come on, keep going. All right, everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you, appreciate you. Y'all gonna be singing that on the way home, on the way to church, when you're falling asleep at night. On the way to revolution. On the way to revolution. One of our leaders that's leading us on the way to that revolution. Give it up for our very own future! Signs down. I want to remind you of who you are and what we do here every week. You see, most of you, most of you were told your entire lives that you were not enough. Most of you were told that you were nothing. And some of us got told that so much that we believed it. And it didn't matter 
what kind of circumstance we're in. All right, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. Give it up for Michael Williams! Y'all gonna be singing that on the way home, on the way to church, when you're falling asleep at night. On the way to revolution. One of our leaders that's leading us on the way to that revolution. Give it up for our very young future! Signs down. I want to remind you of who you are and what we do here every week. You see, most of you, most of you were told your entire lives that you were not enough. Most of you were told that you were nothing. And some of us got told that so much that we believed it. And it didn't matter what kind of circumstance we were born into, once that gets into your body, and once it gets into your mind, it rots you. That's what it feels like. And it feels like you live with this thing inside of you, there on the periphery of your vision and everything that you experience, any kind of joy, triumph, that feeling lives there and tells you that that feeling will be gone tomorrow. It will tell you that that feeling of joy and that feeling of success and that feeling of purpose, that it will be gone tomorrow because most of us were told that we were not enough. And so every week we come together Despite everything telling us that we are not enough, we are not enough to change the system, we are not enough to win, we are not enough to bring justice, and we resist that narrative every single week. Every single week we come together to remind each other that we are enough. We are enough. You are enough. And we come here and we witness the pain of these families. And we do it because so many of us have desperately needed a witness for our own pain. And so we become the thing for other people that we needed most ourselves. And there is no work that is more meaningful. And there is no work that is more holy. You are and you have become the defenders of the dead. And I need you to know that there is no holier work. And when you become defenders of the dead, we become liberators of the living. Do you hear me? They would have these families. They would have us be swept under the rug a thought for today gone tomorrow a mere hashtag a memory that you reflect on and that's what it means to live in a society that disposes of people a society that would just as easily dispose of us I want to tell you a story and some of you may have heard this story before but I need you to understand something deeper still from it. I once walked onto a flight, and on that flight, I was late, and I stepped through first class, and I wanted to throw my carry-on up, and a small, older man, he popped up, and he said, do you belong here? 
And my first thought was, I could take him. <laughs> but I thought about that moment often. You see, that is what happens when you're dealing with someone who's been told that they belong their entire life. And they begin to think that their job is to make sure that they belong because you don't. Yeah. Right. Right? right? And I know because each and every one of you know what it's like not to belong. And to be told that you don't belong again and again. In fact, that's what we get told every day. Right. And that's what our movement gets told, that we don't belong, that we're too controversial, too loud. Yeah. I want to tell you something about what that moment taught me and what moments when we come together like this. What it teaches me, you see this man, he stood before me and asking me the question he didn't realize. They didn't ask me the question he had already answered, did you see? You want to ask me if I belong here? You see, if you have to keep me, if you have to keep me small, if you would jail me by the limits of your imagination, you must stay there too as a guard. Nobody is going anywhere, nobody grows. To ask a question like that tells me something. You see, he has a story about himself that he's come to believe. And we've said this before, if I, if we had accepted the story that we were born into, it would have been to accept our own destruction. You see, I stopped believing the story that was told about me a long time ago. And we're rewriting our own now, we're writing our own. But I wanna tell you this, When this man stood up and asked me that question, he told me something. You see, I have learned, and not everyone around you has in your lives, but those of us here, we have, we have learned that we were, that we were born into a trap. And you see, to know the trap exists is not to not be trapped at all. But there before me stood a man who had become the bearer and protector of an entity that told them how to live his entire life. And he disappeared himself into it. In fact, he forfeited himself into it. And he's become the defender and protector of an entity. He's carelessly accepted his conditions unthinkingly. He would accept circumstances that would benefit his the body but decay his mind. And I want to tell you something. If the mind is the muscle of the soul, which is to say it is the closest thing to the God, the grace of God that we have within us, should such a thing exist. Then the work of thinking for oneself and seeing the world as it is, not as you were told, and seeing people as they are, not as how you were told they are, the ability to think for oneself is the holiest thing that you can do. And the opposite, the most heinous. And against every, every obstacle and every system that has existed in your lives and around us, you have decided to think for yourself. And I need you to understand how very important that is. Because your entire life you were told not to, you were taught to just mindlessly accept the conditions in our society and in our world. And you see, you would forfeit a part of yourself. And I don't know about you, but me, I believed it for a very long time and I had to claw my way back into the living. You, the defenders of the dead and the liberators of the living, the bricklayers of the revolution. And remember that in order to have the revolution, we need to have the revelation of who we are. And so every week, you need to remind yourselves that you're enough the way that we remind each other that we're enough. You see, that's all Black Lives Matter ever, ever was. A rewriting of the story that we were given. A decision, a refusal to accept what was given and say, this is enough. And I'll tell you something about what I mean when I say things 
like poverty is on purpose. And it is, it is a manufactured reality. You see, if wealth was enough, if developing a, a middle class was enough, black people would have already been free. You see, a black middle class was never what the fight was about. It was never about becoming freer by being as close to the status quo as we could get. The fight is in eliminating the status quo altogether because it has been the people who are oppressed that have been holding it up at the expense of ourselves. And so we said no more. And so if there's any of you and I'll say this again and I'll say it until we have it memorized. Who has wondered ever what kind of person you would have been and what you would have been doing during the atrocities of the past at the time of the abolitionist fight to end slavery at the time when black people were raising up. You are enough. And we come here and we witness the pain of these families. And we do it because so many of us have desperately needed a witness for our own pain. And so we become the thing for other people that we needed most ourselves. And there is no work that is more meaningful. And there is no work that is more holy. You are and you have become the defenders of the dead. And I need you to know that there is no holier work. And when you become defenders of the dead, we become liberators of the living. Do you hear me? They would have these families. They would have us be swept under the rug a thought for today gone tomorrow a mere hashtag a memory that you reflect on and that's what it means to live in a society that disposes of people a society that would just as easily dispose of us I want to tell you a story and some of you may have heard this story before but I need you to understand something deeper still from it. I once walked onto a flight and on that flight, I was late and I stepped through first class and I wanted to throw my carry-on up in a small older man, he popped up and he said, do you belong here? And my first thought was, I could take him. <laughs> but I thought about that moment often. You see, that is what happens when you're dealing with someone who's been told that they belong their entire life. And they begin to think that their job is to make sure that they belong because you don't. Yeah. Right. Right? Right, right? And I know because each and every one of you know what it's like not to belong. And to be told that you don't belong again and again. In fact, that's what we get told every day. Right. And that's what our movement gets told, that we don't belong, that we're too controversial, too loud. Yeah. I want to tell you something about what that moment taught me and what moments when we come together like this. What it teaches me, you see this man, he stood before me and asking me the question he didn't realize. They didn't ask me the question he had already answered, did you see? You wanna ask me if I belong here? You see, if you have to keep me, if you have to keep me small, if you would just